So the other day a viewer, Chris, left this comment up above in a video and Chris is struggling with getting the right material settings for uh, a longer B130 watt. And it, occur it occurred to me that there are probably lots of people in a similar situation. Maybe it's your first time laser and you, you just got it and you're trying to understand basically what the heck is going on. So what I thought I'd do is in this video is address Chris's comments specifically and show you all of the things you need to do to determine all the settings you need for any piece of material that you could possibly want to engrave. Now, the good news is if you have light burn, then you already have all the tools you need to make this happen. So with that, let's get started. How's it going everybody? Steve here, welcome back to my workshop. Now, I wanna address Chris's comments specifically here, so I am gonna use this longer B1 behind me, but uh, if you have a different laser, you've probably had similar problems, and we'll try and solve everybody's problem here in this video, uh, regardless of the kind of laser you have or the kind of material you're trying to determine the settings for. And I wanna try and keep this tutorial under five minutes, so we're gonna dive in really quickly here, and we're gonna start in Lightburn. So I've got Lightburn fired up here and I've, I've configured the longer B1 laser. Now Lightburn provides a bunch of built-in tools and these are the ones we're gonna use for this video. Uh, if you click on the laser tools uh, menu option here, you'll see a bunch of things. The one we're gonna focus on is the material test. And if you just open that when you start, you're gonna get a bunch of random, seemingly random numbers. And what I'm gonna do is for the speed range, which is which, which will be the vertical axis, I'm gonna go from 100 to 1,000, which is for a 30 watt laser is a good place to start. And I'm gonna make the square size four millimeters just to keep things smallish. And the power, of course, we're gonna go from 10 to 100%. And I can do a preview here and you can see that you would get nice even numbers all the way up the vertical scale and even numbers on the horizontal scale. And it just makes the numbers easier to understand. So that's all we need to do for the first one. Now, if we want to look at the material setting here, uh, you'll see that the mode is aligned. So we're going to actually do cuts. So this one specifically will be a cut test. And it's something I always do with material. Uh, if you're not doing cuts on your material, in the case of Chris's situation, uh, the material is bamboo and maybe there isn't cutting going on. It's probably a cutting board or something. So you might want to skip this, but it's something I generally try to do with any piece of material. So uh, I'll, I'm gonna do the cut and I'll show you what we get. Now I won't bore you with uh, seven and a half minutes of watching a laser cut out little squares here, but suffice it to say that, that at each of the power speed combinations, we did a cut. And when you're done, you'll see that there are places where there are holes cut and places where they aren't. Uh, and what does this tell you? It tells you that, that there are combinations that you can cut. So for example, 90% at 500 millimeters per minute is guaranteed to give you a good cut on this material. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is now an engrave test on this material and see what it looks like. All right, so I went back into the material test generator in Lightburn and uh, I'm gonna do some adjustments here. I'm gonna set the minimum speed to 3000 millimeters a minute and the maximum to 12,000 millimeters a minute. And the power will remain the same, but over in the material settings themselves, I'm gonna change the mode from line to fill. And what that will do is instead of drawing uh, little squares, it will draw filled in squares uh, at the current power and speed settings. So. Uh, that's all I'm going to do and now I'll do the engrave. And if we take a look at the results here, you can see we get a, 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 a nicely shaded area ranging from complete blackness. In fact, it burned through there at 100% 3000 millimeters all the way up to almost nothing. And you can just simply pick the shade that you want. And uh, you'll also see that some of those have specific depth. So uh, it's a pretty easy selection and it makes it very easy to determine what the right setting is. Now that should give you a good idea of, of the cutting settings and the engraving settings you're gonna need for any particular material. But there's one more test I like to do, and this one you won't find in Lightburn. It's one that I do uh, on my own. And I created a Lightburn project. Now, if you're a member of the channel, I'll put the this Lightburn file up on the member site. But if you're not a member and you don't wanna become a member, and that's understandable, uh, you can create this fairly simply and I'll show you what it looks like now. Okay, and here I am back in Lightburn. I've loaded my project. Now, this test is only useful if you're doing grayscale engraving. So uh, think photo engraving, but you want that higher quality of grayscale rather than dithering. Uh, if you're dithering, pick one of the settings you got off your engraving test and use that. But here, 
uh, we're actually changing the power uh, as we're engraving. So what this one will tell us is what the best speed for engraving a photo is uh, using grayscale. All right, now if we look at the results here, you can see uh, at the 2000 millimeter a minute line, the extreme right is very, very dark, but it's also really charred if you look at the actual output. Going down to the other extreme, you can see that the boundary between mostly white and mostly dark is uh, shifted more to the right. So uh, generally a better balance uh, from a gradient perspective. The right hand side is definitely a lot lighter. So you might want to use that 10,000 millimeter a minute speed for, for doing photo engraving uh, with grayscale. 8,000 looks all right too. I wouldn't say 4,000 is acceptable uh, unless you want something with really dark output uh, or, or it's mostly uh, a light image. So uh, that's the results for, for grayscale engraving too. All right, so Chris and anyone else who are having uh, difficulties getting the material settings right, hopefully this helped and makes your experience a little bit a little bit better and certainly you waste a little less material so with that we can wind down uh as always i'll put a video up in the corner here go watch that i'll see you over there and get out there make your world and i'll see you next time